Uh, we do want to talk about uh, Manchester United, obviously. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still the manager and it looks like he might be the manager for a little while. There's a possibility if they get spanked at the weekend they'll pull the trigger then, but perhaps what they're doing is they're buying time all the way up until the next international break. That seems to be one of the theories that's out there at the moment. A reminder, OTBAM brought to you by Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razors. Alex Ferguson happened to be at Manchester United yesterday on other business, totally separate business, unconnected to... He's just picking up the tickets for the next game because that's what you always do. You always go the day that everybody's back in the office. You've got to collect the tickets because, you, you know, there's no other way that... He can't just rock up. If... if somebody might say who, who are you you can't come in here that's what happens that's why he was at Old Trafford yesterday yeah um, a, a pre-planned appointment by all accounts and then you see it reported somewhere that it was as a show of support for Solskjaer so hard to know exactly what it is but it is a bit weird that he's there on a day when the guy looks like he's about to lose his job fair play to him though like he's you, you gotta say he's got the he's, this, he's got loyalty mm. this is his guy and he is sticking with him to the bitter end, except when he's talking to Khabib. <laughs> well, that is that is true. Ronaldo is the, the common denominator there in both conversations, isn't it? It was more to do with uh, Ronaldo not being played from the start in that conversation with Khabib and uh, Ronaldo not pressing enough now. Ronaldo is just the issue. Maybe maybe that's it. Maybe so. Maybe Kieran McKenna will go. Ronaldo will be sold, or just like his contract will be executed, and uh, Solskjaer will somehow scurry away. Still, as Manchester United boss beyond Christmas. Ennis Gillen's obviously a hotbed of uh, Gaelic football slash coaching slash soccer. Yeah. Listening to the football pod of Paddy and Andy last week, I didn't realise that um, uh, Rory Gallagher was such a, a good soccer player as well. He was, he was over in, in England. Um, and uh, there you go, from Anna. There you go. And uh, Kieran McKenna, the former GEA player by all accounts. I, I, uh... According to his Wikipedia this morning. Now, okay. That's, uh, yeah. By, by all accounts, indeed. Uh, we're bringing the, the, the crappy quiz to, uh, <laughs> to our journalism now. That's great. Uh, Ferguson, Ed Woodward and Richard Arnold all threw their support behind Solskjaer, according to this is the Guardian piece in the Irish Times. I think that uh, uh, everybody has little details now. The, 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 the uh, code of the dressing room has been broken somewhat. Um, that details of... So they had a, a clear the air meeting, which you know, it seems like most teams do, after the... Leicester game which was we thought the worst and most humiliating things could get for Manchester United but oh no oh no um, one squad member criticised some of his teammates for an apparent lack of motivation in training uh, Solskjaer asked the players to give their opinion one player questioned Solskjaer's decision to give Harry Maguire the captaincy only six months after he joined from Leicester so that's obviously somebody who was at the club before that that's not you know uh, one player turned on Solskjaer over his team selection grilling the Norwegian over why he was so reluctant to drop players who were performing poorly in matches. That player claimed Solskjaer and his staff were too resistant to reward those fringe players who were training well with a place in the starting eleven. This isn't good that this is all coming out. No, it's, it's not. Like It does come down, though, to kind of a, a question above that about what, what happens next with Manchester United. Like, Do Manchester United fans, I wonder, actually trust the hierarchy at the club to get this this next step right and they've got a lot wrong over the years so I'm not quite sure if it, it's actually going to happen like it does seem that the what's going to happen now is that there might actually be a, a little bit of damage done to maybe Solskjaer's reputation maybe not but it does, it, like if he got sacked right now it seems that a lot of Manchester United fans would turn around and be like you know what great player legend you know what he, he brought us a, a certain distance and his time was just up Whereas it feels the longer this goes on, the more maybe it's like, you know what, screw you, Ollie. I'm getting so frustrated with what you're doing and uh, and, and I'm no longer, you no longer have a place in my heart. What's going to be interesting is that like that Manchester, Ma- Manchester Derby right before the international break could well be his his last gig because uh, if they don't win that game or if they get beaten soundly like they did against Liverpool in that game, then he is gone because clearly what they're doing now is lining up Conte or lining up a replacement and just making sure that replacement is ready to start the very day after Solskjaer clears his office out so uh, I wouldn't be overly confident that actually his stay of execution is a stay is going to last much longer than these next three games if he wins all three games may, maybe that changes a little bit but I, I oh, just I think if he wins all three he's staying absolutely you don't think this is just the hierarchy oh. just making a bit of time while they get the next man up no, no I think if, but if you win if you beat Man City tell Conte to go back home uh, if you beat Man City, you, you get to wait and then pick your manager next summer, right? 
That's what happens. I, I, I don't, I mean, the whole, I don't buy that at all. Is, is like not till next summer. Sky. It's it's until the next time there is an. Uh, no, you're like, not going to sack him. Throw into care. Like uh, so, after the international break, uh, so it's Watford first, then it's a Champions League fixture against Villarreal, then it's Chelsea and Arsenal in, in back-to-back fixtures. Like, there's every chance that those fixtures just turn into chaos as well after they beat Manchester City. Like this is this has been the whole point of, of the last little while. It's been boom bust every second week. Well, it hasn't. It it has it has. Uh, it has busted. been this season. It has busted and then it has boomed for long enough for everybody to go, why was it? It's, it's actually not that bad. It needs to <sighs> I don't know. keep the end of the season. And that's, look, I, the, I, I don't think it's going to happen. There's no way that, I mean, our Spurs not watching this and going, so you stand here and you stand here and if you just pass the ball to each other, that takes out nine-tenths of the entire Manchester United team. Can you, <laughs> can you do that, lads? Well, no. Well, the answer to that question is not definitely yes. No, it's absolutely not. Um, but, you know, if, if Harry Kane wants to seal his move to Manchester City, what more, what, what better way to, like, score a couple of goals against Man United and go, look, I could be doing this for you, lads. Come on. Mm. Like, possibly. And, uh, like, uh, we, we said it at the beginning of this one now, and... I never believed that they would be 2-0 down against Atalanta and lose 5-0 to Liverpool. But I think this day last week we were saying, you know, this run, United, or sorry, we, I was saying this time last week that United would win one of these games, that they would, and everything would be fine again. I, I would change that now to United could win one of the, United probably won't win any of these games. But if they do, it's no guarantee that everything is fine again because they've just lost 5-0 to Liverpool. Oh, no, it's, look, this is, this is the end. It's just whether or not this is the very end <laughs> the beginning of the end or it's over and yeah uh, but it, like make no the, the fact that they didn't already pull the plug suggests one of two things they're trying to find a manager they're trying to do a deal in the background to make sure that somebody comes in straight away and that there's not like these three very important games which will go a long way towards qualification for the latter stage of the Champions League and or qualification next season to the Champions League so the, you don't want to Snooker yourself there. If you if you are lining up Antonio Conte, you need to know exactly how much it's going to be, length of contract, uh, who the backroom team is going to be. Have those all in place so that there's like a handover straight away. That's um, that will be good management, which we haven't always seen in terms of the plans around who's coming next and, and what the the order of things is going to be. Um, that's one aspect. The other aspect is that you actually think that you've given this guy a new contract and you're not going to overreact to a few bad results. I mean, that late winner that Jesse Lingard scored, the whole team were behind Solskjaer then. The 3-2 win just last week was a real sign that the team is behind him and that, that you know, any, anybody can go 2-0 down. Not everybody can win 3-2. So, it's good, good marketing. It's uh, it's true what you say, that there is kind of like an element of, of fight somewhere within this team and they haven't completely given up on him yet, but it probably shows even less fight when on the pitch they're working away and maybe behind the scenes they're leaking stuff to their agents who are subsequently leaking stuff to the press and that feels just a, a little bit snaky uh, well, to be honest and that's probably an even worse I, I have some sympathy with the, the players who might be telling their agent stuff and the agents are using that to it's not the, the players aren't leaking stuff to their agents they're just having a conversation with their mates mm. and the agents are being sneaky yeah, yeah. I, I, like at the same time, it's, it's all are these conversations just starting out of the blue all of a sudden? Like, well, I, I guess you look at it from the agent standpoint. Why are why are they leaking now rather than before? And it's because they might think that their player needs a move in January because this Manchester United team aren't going to be a Champions League team next year. Right? Like, obviously, that's the motivation for the agent suddenly leaking now. But I, I would suggest that there's also just a little bit more coming out of the dressing room now than before. When the chips are down, there's been a lot of these players who are clearly leaking stuff to their agents more than more than before so that would suggest a, a, a lack of a full unity off the pitch but again you say they, they came from 2-0 down to beat Atalanta but like you can't you can't recover from that scoreline against Liverpool especially when you got yourself into that position as a result of being an utter shambles well, on the I was pitch. doing the exact same things that you did against Atalanta <clears throat> like that was the thing it's, it's that you repeated the process you picked the same team you didn't make any changes you gave everybody the opportunity to get tape on you and funnily enough Liverpool watched the tape and were like Oh, 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 thanks very much. We'll be having that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, get in touch. You can leave a comment in the YouTube stream or, of course, you can uh, WhatsApp us. 87 is the WhatsApp number.